I am installing and customizing an ESU Lope Pilot decoder in an Atlas GP39-2 on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. I recently acquired a brand new Atlas InScale GP39-2. This is the newest run of these locomotives, but the one that I purchased was a DC locomotive that came decoder ready. Well, today I'm going to be installing an ESU drop-in Loke Pilot decoder in this locomotive. Now, this is not a sound decoder, as I'm planning to run this locomotive in consist with another locomotive that has a Loke sound decoder in it, and I really don't need sound in both locomotives. But I want to show you how this particular decoder goes in this locomotive, and we're going to be using ESU's Loke programmer to customize some of the settings in order to get the lighting effects that I want, as well as to be able to get it set up and ready to run in consist. So let's head on over to the workbench. We'll get this locomotive opened up. We'll get the decoder dropped in, get the customization all done, and get it out and get it running on the layout. Visit our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. Their new location with 5,500 square feet of inventory and next day shipping make them your premier model railroad destination. MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. I'm installing a decoder in this new Atlas GP39-2. I want to show you this locomotive briefly. It's very similar in many ways to the GP38-2 that I reviewed in the past. And I'll share a link to that video at the end of this one if you'd like to know more about them. As I remove the shell of the locomotive, you can see that Atlas has redesigned their split frame from years past. First of all, the halves of the chassis are held together with clips on the ends rather than the old nylon screws. But also, the pickups on the trucks are hardwired into the frame rather than relying on the old brass friction connections. This is a great improvement in design. I'm installing ESU's Loke Pilot Micro Slide-In Decoder version 4. There are version 5 decoders on the market, but this version 4 will do everything that I need for this locomotive, and I saved a couple dollars along the way. There are no installation instructions in the box, but there is a document with a web address for a full video of instructions. In the case of this decoder, however, installation is so easy that the instructions are really not needed. You literally slide the light board of the locomotive backward out of the pickup and retaining slots, lift it away, then slide the new decoder back in the same place. You don't even need to loosen the frame halves like you often had to do with the old design. I put number 2711 on the layout for a basic test. It ran perfectly right off the bat. Now, with ESU decoders, you have tons of programmable options. The basic options can be easily programmed right on the layout like you probably have always done. These include changing the address of the locomotive as I'm doing here, adjusting acceleration and deceleration, and adjusting the start, mid, and top voltages. Other functions, such as speed tables, I have typically programmed using JMRI, but ESU uses many CVs above the standard 256, and I have found that JMRI doesn't work well with these higher CVs. Thus, for many of the more advanced functions, you really need ESU's LOC programmer to customize them. I'm going to give you a quick tour of a couple functions that I customized for this locomotive, then we'll come back to the layout, lash this locomotive up to its partner, and give it a really good test run. Now I'm at my computer and I have my programming track set up and you see I've got the camera set on my programming track down in the corner of your screen. Uh, I have a portable programming track that uh, had a Digitrax PR3 on it, which is what I use when I'm programming using JMRI. 
And there was enough room on that portable track for me to mount the LOC programmer to it. So I can use the same track for, for both programmers. I just removed the wires from the PR3, put them into the LOC programmer. Works awesome all in one little piece of hardware. Uh, this is not going to be a, a full tutorial by any means uh, of the Loke Programmer or the software. If you would like some tutorials on the Loke Programmer software, I'd be glad to do them. So let me know in the comment section down below if that's something that you would be interested in. Uh, I just want to show you what I have set up here for my lighting functions. Uh, and I've already... Uh, I've already made the changes here and I, I have them here and I'll show you exactly what they look like. Uh, and uh, again, if, if you'd like more tutorials, let me know and I can, I can show you some more detail about that. Basically, uh, to read the CVs as they are on your decoder, uh, you go up here to the top uh, menu, the, the programmer menu, and when you click on that, the very first line is read the decoder data. And then the next line is write decoder data. Now this only works with ESU decoders. This is specifically for ESU decoders. And um, I'll be honest, if you just have one or, one or two locomotives with ESU decoders and that's all you plan to have, uh, you may not want to invest in the, the Loke programmer. You may not want to spend that kind of money. Uh, there are people out there who will do this for you uh, for a very reasonable price. Uh, one that I happen to know because he's done some work for me is Shane Mason, who's known on YouTube as Breakman17. And uh, you could contact him. I'm sure he'd be, love to help you if you've just got one or two. But if you're going to be doing a lot of, of ESU decoders, and I find myself getting more and more of them, then it is definitely worthwhile to invest in the in the software. Now, again, what I want to do here is Rule 17 lighting. So just very, very quickly, uh, I've called in the information from this locomotive, and, and it's all in here, and it's divided into these menus. You notice it's set here for decoder, and this has all of the different settings that you could do. The, the first thing that I uh, needed to work on is function mapping. And as I click on that, you can see here all of the functions that uh, are set up or, or are not set up for a particular decoder. Uh, in this case, you see all kinds of functions here in the, in the first column that says conditions. And, and that conditions tells you, okay, in this situation, uh, what does the decoder supposed to do? Uh, so what I'm concerned with here is really just two things. One is the lighting effects. And the other is switching mode, uh, because this is going to be a switcher for my locomotive. So in this case, you see in, in the first uh, column, I have, uh, you can ignore these, these first two lines. In fact, I'll just, I'll, I'll get rid of them altogether. I can highlight a line and click this X and just delete that line out altogether. Uh, and the first, uh, the first line you see, I've set the, the, the locomotive. There's two lines. Whenever it's in forward direction, and F0 is pushed, in other words, the headlight is turned on, then here under physical outputs, you see the front light is turned on and the rear light is turned on. I'll just show you the pull down menus here. Uh, these are the different conditions that you can set, whether it's moving uh, and whether or which direction it's in, you can set those or you can ignore them. You see the ones that say ignore, the, those will have no bearing. Uh, in this case, F0 is on. And you can turn it on, or you can turn it off, or you can set it to ignore. Everything else is being ignored. Uh, so that's how this works. And then under physical outputs, again, I got a pull down menu. And so I could use this to set the characteristics for the front light, the rear light, auxiliary lights, which are typically used for like uh, ditch lights and, and that sort of thing. So Anytime it's in the forward direction, the light's on, the front light is on, and you notice this next line, the rear light is also on. Uh, so I've got, uh, and, and then the next line tells us that whenever it's in the reverse direction and the light's on, the rear light is on. But the next line says when it's in reverse and, and the light is on, then the front light is on also. So in other words, to make a long story short, whether it's in forward or reverse, if the light's turned on, both the front and the rear lights are going to come on. Uh, we're going to, to set that to, to make the Rule 17 effect in just a moment. The last thing I, I want to show you here that I have set up for this, again, a, a decoder with no sound, is uh, this line right down here that shows me that whenever F7 is pushed, we go all the way over here to logic uh, functions. Uh, I have two logic functions in the pull-down menu that are checked. First is acceleration, which means that acceleration is turned off. 
these, these uh, this locomotive has acceleration turned on on it. But uh, whenever I push F7, it'll be off. And also, it will go into switching mode. Uh, so I w don't need to set that on all my locomotives, but the ones that I'll be doing switching with, uh, that's uh, very handy. So uh, that's my function mapping. Now, one more thing for the Rule 17 lighting. Uh, under Right below function mapping is function outputs. And again, I, forgive me if I'm, if I'm going too fast. I just wanted to give you a sense of this. And uh, I'll say it for a third time, if you'd like more tutorials where I'll take my time and show you some details, let me know down below and I'd be glad to do that. Under function outputs, you see here a list of, of outputs that, that I can uh, modify, uh, but it's only going to allow me to modify ones that I have set up in function mapping. So here, um, you'll notice there's a front light one and a front light two, a rear light one and a rear light two. The front light two and the rear light two will let me to set will allow me to set up two different modes for both my front and light, front and rear light. So in other words, if I wanted a regular headlight, but then sometimes I wanted a Mars light, I could set my regular light up on front light one. I could set up my Mars light effect with front light two and the switch back and forth. Uh, but you'll notice front light two, rear light two, all the auxiliaries are grayed out. So because I haven't set any of them up in the function mapping, only front light one and rear light one are set up in function mapping. So only they are black and, and I can use them. Um, okay, so my front light, rule 17 lighting. Now I could give this effect a name. I don't really need to because I don't have any, any uh, um, extra functions that I'm using here except for this one. Uh, down almost to the bottom where it says output mode or effect, uh, this normally is set to dimmable headlight. But I really like this effect. Right below that, it has dimmable headlight fade in and out so that whenever this uh, goes from bright to dim, it fades back and forth rather than just snapping from bright to dim. Uh, I've set the brightness for my dimmable light, the dim light, to 20. And then the, the front light I've set for rule 17 forward. And then if we go down to rear light, did the same thing. Uh, set it to a dimmable headlight that fades in and out. Set the brightness to 20. Only this one I set to rule 17 in reverse. Uh, and now my, my, uh, my lighting effects are all ready. One last thing that I want to do, and that is up here under the, uh, to the left under the address menu. Uh, you see I've already set the address to the, uh, to, the, to the number. I think we did that as we started here. Um, but down here at the bottom where it says activate functions in consist mode, uh, this is where I tell the decoder, these are the buttons that I want to work, the functions I want to be able to use, even when it's consisted with another locomotive. Uh, in my case, I want F0 or my lighting functions to work in consist uh, so that my rule 17 lighting will work. And then over here, you'll notice F7 is checked. That's my button that allows me to go the, uh, put this into switching mode. Uh, I've clicked those because I want them to, to, to function whenever it's consistent. If this was a sound locomotive, I would want to click some of my, you know, my sound functions. So I'd want F1 for the bell to work. I'd want F2 for the horn to work. Any other functions that I want to use whenever it's consistent together, uh, I would want to click. There's one last thing I want to show you about the software um, and also about my, my locomotive on the programming track. Uh, now, I've already come up here to Programmer and written this code to, to the locomotive. Uh, I don't need to do that again. It just takes time. Uh, but over here on the very far left, uh, up at the very top where it says Driver Cab, I love this because it allows me to actually test all of my functions right on the programming track. So in order to activate this, I need to click the go button and that's going to activate uh, this mode on the, on the programming track. Now, if you look at the locomotive, I'm going to turn the light. Well, first of all, down here at the bottom on the, uh, on the cab, you'll notice it's set to the left, to the right. That's the forward direction. And I'm going to turn the light on and there comes my light. Uh, you'll notice the front light's on, but also if you look in the mirror behind the locomotive, you'll notice the rear light is on as well and they are on dim. Now I can use this slider and actually move the locomotive on the programming track. So I'm gonna do that, but first I'm gonna set it to reverse. And I want you to watch in the mirror uh, on the programming track how the light goes from dim to bright as I just start to move the locomotive. I don't have room to move it very far. 
but there it goes from dim, bright to dim, and then I stop it. It goes back to back to dim, went from dim to bright, and when I stopped it, went back from from uh, uh, bright to dim. I'll put it in forward. Now watch the 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 front headlight. See how it gets bright as it moves, and then when I stop it, it goes back to dim. Let's do the rear one one more time so you can see it. There it got bright. And there it goes back to dim again. Uh, this will allow me to, to test any functions. If I had sound functions set up, I could test them here as well. I, I love this function of, uh, of this particular software. So in a nutshell, uh, very, very quickly, I know that's how I set up Rule 17 Lighting and get this locomotive ready to run in Consist on my layout. Back at the layout, I have number 2711 set up with its partner, number 2256. This is the Atlas GP38-2 with a Loke Sound decoder that I talked about earlier, that I reviewed earlier, and that I'll link at the end of this video. I set up the advanced consist using my throttle, being sure to set number 2711 as traveling in the reverse direction as it will be the trailing locomotive in this consist. I like to test the consist uncoupled to make sure that the speed matching is good. With ESU decoders in matching brand locomotives, I rarely have to do anything to adjust them to match the speeds. If I adjust the speed tables, I simply set both locomotive speed tables the same and they do very well. This was rarely the case with my old Digitrax decoders. Now let's watch this pair do some work around North Yard. Well, I am very excited to have this pair of locomotives 
ready to run, doing the yard switching in North Yard. The older Atlas locomotives that I was using for this purpose were used when I bought them several years ago and just are nearing the end of the life of their decoders at the very least. And the locomotives themselves are getting a little bit worn as well. So I'm very excited to have uh, these new uh, locomotives to do the switching work there in North Yard. And I think they're running fantastically together. Very, very excited about that. Well, if you'd like to know more about Atlas and their new design for locomotives and a little more about the GP38 that is part of uh, this lash up, uh, I did a review of it, as I said earlier, and you can find it in the link in the corner of your screen right now. Be sure and take a moment to check out the description down below where you're going to find links to my Amazon page, my Amazon pick of the week, as well as my Micromark promo code that can save you 10% on regularly priced items at micromark.com tons of other great links that you will enjoy and benefit from. Be sure and check those out. Well, if you'd like some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. 10, Lizzie?